Hello and welcome to Become the Teapot. I'm Ian. And so am I. This week we'll be diving into the trench as we cover the first six issues of Aquaman Volume 7 by Jeff Johns and Evan Reese. That's because this episode is all about the 2018 film Aquaman, and unlike Amber Heard, we kept our British accents for this one. Ready, Ian? Ready. Then let's get wet. Something that I did quite like, actually, about them both, really, is that the Atlanteans have to wear these sort of land suits, yeah. if you will, which I think they've literally pulled that straight out of the comic and put it in the film. Yeah, and the sort of watery holograms as well were straight from the comics, yeah. Yeah, like we said, I think that's because you've got someone like Jeff Johns who worked on the comic and the film, so there is a bunch of Easter eggs in this film. Well, it should make your job this week extra easy then, so let's get on with it, shall we? Ian's, Ian's egg hunt, Ian's, Ian's egg hunt, Ian's Ian's, Ian's egg hunt. I'm not yoking you. So Ian, what have you got for us this week? Something that I didn't learn from the film, mm-hmm. but I learned about the character, is that some of Aquaman's tattoos are actually real. Jason Momoa has like a patterned tattoo mm-hmm. on his forearm. And it's something to do with like his family crest. So when Zack Schneider was making Justice League and potentially going back to Batman v Superman, he decided to incorporate that into the look of the character. So obviously he continued it up his arm and onto his shoulder yeah. and his chest, which then clearly James Wan had to continue into this film, yeah. which that's fair enough. I mean, you kind of have to carry on patterns and... Well, not necessarily. If it's a British accent, you can drop it entirely. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of James Wan, he actually hid the creepy doll from The Conjuring at the bottom of the sea. Oh, really? Which is obviously a reference to his horror background Mm -hmm. as you said yeah it's the um annabelle doll right i've not actually seen any of them i'm not a big horror aficionado i haven't seen that particular range of films but i've saw one can't remember what it's called but it was about a creepy ventriloquist doll that i think a couple were getting married or engaged or whatever and someone sent it to them as a present and it's directed by james wan and it's bloody weird (laughs) um but yeah he's just i think he's got a thing for horror films with creepy dolls in maybe they are creepy (laughs) They really are. Yeah. Like the one from uh, Goosebumps. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? Oh, well. I'm not, I'm not going to sit and try and remember his name. <laughs> and something that I did quite like, actually, because I used to watch it when I was mm. a kid, was near the beginning of the film, in the lighthouse, the TV was playing um, Stingray. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old classic 60s puppet series. Yeah. Similar to Thunderbirds, mm-hmm. which is about submarines and sea creatures. Yeah, yeah. Guess, it's, which... it's underwater adventure. Yeah. A nice little nod. I noticed as well the fishbowl was sitting, and it panned very slowly over a copy of The Dunwich Horror by H.P. Lovecraft, mm-hmm. which is the wrong book. Because Dunwich was a landlocked farming village. I think they meant to put maybe uh, Shadow of Rinsmouth or Call of Cthulhu would have made more sense in there because they were both sea-based towns and horrors. But I noticed there was a very slow pan over the Dunwich horror for some reason. Yeah, maybe it was a little nod to the to the author. Well, yeah, maybe. But again, if you... They ordered the wrong book on Amazon Prime. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> genuinely thinking they, put, they meant to put Shadow of Rinsmouth on there because that would be a lot more. There's fish people in that and all sorts. And it would really <laughs> play into the whole trench aspect. But... Oh well. I mean, well, talking about like sea creatures and what's not, in this film there was an octopus playing the drums. Yeah. Which you might think is like a little funny scene or a reference to The Little Mermaid, <laughs> but actually it's uh, a character called Topo, which is a musical octopus from the comics. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. No, I, uh, I don't know. I didn't know that. Uh, so yeah. I like stuff like that. And uh, this plays in again to that sort of balls to the wall craziness that they've gone for for this film. And just. Sort of last little one to end on Mm -hmm. the news media in the film is pretty much it's either a reference or it's taken from the comics because you've got a tv news channel which is gbs news which is taken from the comics Mm -hmm. and also there's a newspaper called coast city ledger which is obviously a nod to uh green lantern's hometown yeah 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 yeah. and something that we previously covered would have been nice if green lantern was in any of these (laughs) cool all right. Is that all for today? Yeah. Like I said, there is a whole bunch of Easter eggs in this film, but I'm not going to sit there and go through all of them because a lot of you would fall asleep, including you. <laughs> I probably would. But no, I, I liked those. They were some good Easter eggs. Thank you for that. Very tasty. Wet Easter eggs. <laughs> they were maybe boiled in a salt water. That helps. Salty, salty eggs. 